Hello and welcome back and that is right today we want to talk about quite an interesting little development happening over at Synology but before we go any further massive massive full credit to pretty much all of the information in today's video barring a little bit at the end and again you can check the chapter to skip to the end um, all the information from today's video comes from the website Black Void um, our friend Luca who's appeared on the channel several times he has done some seriously impressive digging uh, which is going to make the pretty much a discourse of today's video um, regarding a brand new software platform and indeed a new hardware uh, arm of Synology's portfolio coming if not towards the end of this year by the looks of things then certainly certainly early 2024. Now if you're not aware Black Void is another fantastic resource for not only Synology information but also Synology guides, Synology tutorials, they've got a great forum uh, they're in conjunction with Syno Forum. I recommend you check them out and indeed you're probably familiar with them on the channel. We They have appeared on several videos moreover and there's Luca there when we were talking about the SM 7.2 and no doubt when Synology rolled out their 2024 exposing video and big you know centerpiece stage show there when they do that we'll of course be speaking once again with Luca about what we think of the good and the bad of that but let's crack on to the meat and potatoes of today's video BSM uh, B station manager uh, now this is a new um, variant we're going to be seeing of Synology's portfolio. It is going to be, uh, we've currently got the existing disk station and rack station series, we've of course got the routers as well, but thanks to Luca and his digging, and again links to his site, and of course all of the resources that he managed to dig up over on his site, linked at the top of the description below. Uh, this is looking increasingly like a new kind of ready to rock immediately available turnkey out the box backup solution from Synology there and he's dug in quite deep into this um, uh, ran about oh, uh, very very recently indeed on Synology's archive download site uh, for those that aren't aware Synology have a download archive where although you can go on their main site and download firmware software updates and more they actually run a much more long-term archival download area for much older software updates client tools full firmware and more and when you went into the O section there he noticed that a new icon had appeared bsm from there a uh, version one of this software and it's scrolling straight in there bst 154t now lots of things we can unpack immediately from there and again trust me he has done the homework then we'll crack back onto his site in a moment look at all those tabs but Mainly, this is um, B Station Manager there. This is a model ID, BST154T, so we can already ascertain this is a device that's going to have storage included, uh, the 4T representing 4 terabytes, of course, and it was added incredibly recently. This video being recorded on the 29th of October, and this was added on the 26th of October there, so a very recent addition, and also quite a sizable file. We'll come back to that later on, because again, fair play to Luca. He'd done even more research to find out why exactly this this appears to be 30 to 40 percent larger than your standard DSM download there. Now, the reason we keep referring to it as um, B Station Manager, even though we own it as BSM, as uh, um, he was able, to, Luca was able to immediately point out by looking online and going to certain trademarks and you know patents and stuff like that, he managed to find B Station Synology have registered this. So clearly, this and that are largely the same. Now. B Drive is something Synology rolled out in summer 2023. In other words, just a few months ago, we talked about it on the channel. We did a review of that device, the good, the bad, what we liked, what we didn't. And this was a connected SSD drive available in 1 and 2 TB that allowed you to um, not only back up up to five individual devices onto it on a file folder level, um, on top of that, it took advantage of the network adapters on the connected host device um, to allow itself to be communicative with other devices as well for those backups and indeed take advantage of things like B-Drop that allowed you to back up um, files or send files immediately from your phone onto your desktop wirelessly there. Now, a lot of users uh, felt this was a little bit rudimentary as far as the rest of Synology's catalog there. It did have a place, I think, for a lot of users looking for a very simplified file transfer within a very small sphere, but it didn't really have the kind of aggressive uh, network and remote access and indeed feature set of Synology's DSM platform there. Well, a lot of users, myself included, wondering if this was part of a larger rollout, if this device was going to serve as eventually something you connect to the NAS to make a more simplified transfer between the data rather than just with the client device there. Now, 
this looks like a completely different beast the beast station here now just to break into it there to go through a lot of the stuff that uh, luca was able to find while digging into this like pretty ripping in to that format again full credit to him first and foremost when he was digging into it he was able to find out a lot of the version there and finding out that it is built on the same architecture as dsm now that shouldn't be a huge surprise when you look at synology's srm platform uh, synology router manager that was built on the same kind of grounding as DSM. It was just using the same architecture there, the same design, the same kernel, and then splintering off from that. And clearly, this is doing very much that same thing. Now, if we move further down, he was able to find out the exact reason why it was a chunkier file. And that is because um, BSM is rolling out with all of these applications pre-loaded there. Now, this isn't unusual. This isn't unusual for Synology to roll out um, a firmware update or a new version of their DSM with hard uh, certain applications pre-installed. Again, FileStation, F uh, SAN Manager, and several of the applications are now completely, um, you know, they are included and you cannot remove them. They are quintessential to Synology DSM platform. But what we're seeing here is because certain applications are included. So FileStation, fine. But when we saw applications such as CloudSync, uh, applications such as Synology Drive, and effective applications like CloudSync that highlight that this is not just going to be uh, accessible locally, but clearly this is going to be network and potentially remote accessible thanks to the inclusion of Quick Connect. That means this is far similar to that of traditional Synology Disk Station Manager architecture. This is going to be a storage system that is going to be remote accessible. Now, this leads us to think this is going to be a much more streamlined, uh, pre-storage bundled storage solution that's going to be a little bit more affordable and maybe stylized something in the window those, uh, sorry, the WD MyCloud architecture of NAS, a much more simplified entry-level NAS system where it is genuinely plug-in, you are good to go. And there's not a lot of those in the market. You'd think there'd be a lot, but there really isn't. On top of that, there is, of course, the question marks around the huge gap in the market that was left when Drobo kind of walked off a cliff, so to speak. And a lot of me hopes, given um, the similarities in a lot of the naming conventions there, that the architecture that went into the B drive to be a much more locally or direct attached storage or LAS, locally attached storage um, access point, that potentially this could be something like that merging the two architectures. Unfortunately, we simply don't have enough to make that kind of assumption. We've certainly got enough information here, thanks to Luca, that it is going to be another branch of Synology's uh, portfolio, but we don't know enough about how this will manifest itself and make itself different to that of a traditional disk station device in the J or value series, just not having the storage pre-included there. Maybe Synology rolling out this parallel, uh, parallel part of their portfolio just to say these devices are bundled in with the storage. Talking of that storage, it's worth highlighting that when we look at that download then we see it's only the 4T, there's no other um, storage volumes available. Another thing, when we look at the list of available drives on the B drive, you're able to see that they only supply a 1 and 2 B T B version. There is no 4TB. So 4TB here, we can already ascertain, is going to be the entry point. But again, thanks to continued research by um, Luca into this device, a couple of more things were revealed. Number one, that down here we can see that it is running on the RTD 1619B. This was done thanks to uh, Mango Drive um, uh, add-on there that was inside, not only uh, showing that it is running on an ARM 64-bit processor, so again, it already narrowed down quite significantly which processor that would be, because Synology's not really been dabbling with many over the last few years, but luckily that file there for Mango there had the identifier for that CPU, the RTD 1619B, something we've seen on the DS223, uh, the DS223J, uh, the DS, uh, I believe, 124, and a few other solutions in the value and cost-effective series from Synology. And of course, because this system is going to be running on that more uh, real tech, more uh, cost effective and power efficient CPU, there are some features that will and won't be available. And two of which he was able to identify by digging in were the fact that encryption will be enabled on those shared folders. But of course, volume encryption won't be available. There is no Synology NAS right now running DSM that allows you to take advantage of volume encryption without it being at the very least x86 dual or quad core powered. And of course, that Realtek, the RTD 1619B, is neither of those. So although we're really, really grateful that um, Luca was able to dig that out, we probably 
shouldn't have built our hopes up to hope it would have encryption, but at the very least, uh, I mean volume encryption, at the very least, at least it's got it on there, something that was one of the features of the B drive that it got a lot of flack for, not including encryption there on board for a portable drive. And another thing that's not rightly included there from what we could see from Lucas uh, digging into this is the idea that that 4T version is almost certainly going to be a single drive. We don't know if it's a hard drive or an SSD. Likely, it's going to either be a stand-up desktop drive um, in some sort of uh, compact one-bay form, or they could go down the same route as utilising uh, an onboard NAND SSD for something more portable and more substantial as a NAS, but still being a single drive. Now, the reason we think it's a single drive, again, thank you, Luca, um, because he was able to dig in and find out that the support underscore RAID underscore dry, uh, disk underscore replacement option was preset to no. And that would suggest that this is a single drive system that will not have or support, at very least in this architecture, the need for a RAID, because there's only one drive inside in that setup, we assume. And I think... Lucas' findings there and assumptions are pretty much correct by my eye too. Now this leads us to something else that's been happening, or at least researching in the background of NAS Compares now for the better part of two or three months. Me and Eddie are generally always searching around for different model IDs and pulling apart certain firmware updates and compatibility lists of products. Now a couple of months ago, Eddie did recognise while digging in to a specific compatibility listing several new part numbers that appeared inside this particular compatibility list. These product IDs here, uh, DP series here, the DP7400, the DP3200, and the DP5200. Now we ascertained and kind of assumed I would say for the most part that these were going to be either pre-populated storage devices or new drives. We had no further information and no further confirmation from the brand on which of these it could be. Or it could be something completely different, but these are certainly different component modules. Now, these could break down into the following. Number one, one or all of these could just be this new device that we're looking at here, but they changed the name and that was just a background model ID they were using during the process of development until a new, more established name came along. Number two, these could all be variants of Synology's existing storage portfolio of hard drives and SSDs, but rolling out new models. So the 52, a new DP5200 model there might be, for example, um, uh, deep storage in some way, but also based on their SATA SSD series known as the 52. 5200 series and the 3200 they're based on hard drives and the 7400 potentially being a new generation of m2nvme storage again either as a drive or as a pre-populated storage device and unfortunately this is all supposition these are all genuine model ids that we're able to find in the background of compatibility listings and we have kind of exchanged some stuff back and forth with luca over at black void while we try to find out more about this but all of this is adding up to synology making Arguably, and again, with a pinch of salt here, TBC, some very confident moves into pre-established storage solutions to rival that of WD MyCloud and entry-level storage devices that are pre-populated, pre-installed um, with certain applications, and are going to be genuinely out-the-box storage solutions, when right now most solutions that fit that build either come under the heading of incredibly unfeature rich and i'm looking at you wd or they're going to be solutions when they rock out the gate normally they're overly reliant on third-party software such as when we've seen pre-built solutions that either rock out with unraid on board something we talked about recently with a link plus or solutions that rock out the gate uh, pre-built we have to put true nows or something on them this is neither of those this is going to be a new clearly modified version of synology dsm platform with everything pre installed and ultimately making it a much easier entry point into having a storage solution be it is as a standalone solution or to bolster onto an existing Synology now to and you know improve your 321 backup strategy there but we simply don't have enough to confirm but one thing I think myself and definitely Luca as he stated I would argue a uh, bang on the money about is this is going to come soon because they would not have listed that software update for something that's not going to arrive very soon. And given towards the end of the year, Synology always makes a point of having its launch, kind of its fully features, what we're doing, where we're going um, showcase. Almost certainly this is something that is not going to be revealed prior. It's certainly going to be revealed at that event. If I had to put money on it, as I say, I think this is probably going to be an entry-level storage solution that is going to arrive pre-populated, spanning both hard drives and SSD, arriving in a smaller form and larger RAID-enabled boxes. And I do think, I genuinely think, there is going to be something 
a little bit local access storage or direct attached storage about this. Again, I've got nothing to base that on but a gut instinct about what we're seeing here based on where they're going with B Drive and differentiating it from Synology Disk Station Manager. And I just feel like that architecture and the two are going to be merged in some way after that big gap in the market that Drobo and other vendors have left. But once again, huge credit to Luca over at Black Void. Link to this article here. I'm sure he's going to update it as we know more. And of course, it'll be linked in the description there. And later in the year, we'll get him back here on the channel so we can talk about some of the great things going on with Synology. But apart from that, it is a windy, rainy day here in the UK. I'm going to get myself a brolly, go to the shops and enjoy the rest of my weekend. And you should do the same. But thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.